Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another ACGL 2K final between another Bravado versus Energy Esports clash. And uh, today, Jason unfortunately couldn't join me. And uh, today, I've got Edgar back on the scene. Edgar, welcome back. Glad to be here. Um, let's talk about these teams a little bit, Dare. Yeah, I've um, heard yeah that yesterday one of the one of en's players played for a pickup team at the ace one and uh, that was shocky and they actually ended up winning it yeah no from the ace land it was shocky and waffle from uh, energy esports that uh, took part there with uh, uh three of the white rabbit gaming players that is nato uh, Sh uh sharpie and hypes so uh uh, definitely yep. a very good team they walked away with a w there at the ace land but uh, coming back to this game let's just quickly talk about the team's progression through this tournament or this sunday's tournament that is this 2k i'm going to start off with energy esports they had the number one seed by i could i could imagine by just a couple of points but they did get it and uh, the first round they got a buy they followed that against aka colbert and they threw out them then faced off against randy's they call themselves the randy's but uh energy <laughs> esports uh three two them then came across uh, against a very good sznn team and that team was consisting of ollie fanboys and some of uh, and lord lao obviously and some of those guys and energy esports beat them to one to see themselves into the final then bravado gaming same more or less the same uh picture we see from them they got second seed had the first buy then followed a 3-0 w against fury gaming then a 3-0 against lad and ascend then a, a game that uh was, was really really close against white rabbit gaming now this white rabbit team is really looking good at this stage they've been let's say let's say they had five scrims maximum and to maybe push bravado the way that they did was quite impressing and uh, yes, 3-2 Bravado beat them to see themselves in the final. But that uh, WRG Bravado game, Edgar, was it was close up until the map number 5 where Bravado went 5-0 up in the SND. And then slowly but surely WRG crawled their way back in. But it was a 5-3 scoreline there for Bravado against WRG. Okay. So it was really SND close. wins championships. That's all I really have to say about that. But yeah, I've been watching WRG um, play. They've screamed right on a couple of times, and they're definitely doing most of the things right. Yeah, they're doing what needs to be done, and it, it looks like that uh, that role of Nato does play a big factor into that team. And obviously, if you've got a sword player like Hypes, it always helps, and a big, yeah. big player like Clanko. So, yes, it is the grand final: Energy Esports versus Bravado. The last time these two teams faced off it was a 3-0 sweep for bravado over energy esports the question is has ian done enough to overturn that that result if you're asking me that uh, that's maybe the or that's the energy esports manager i can't see that happening i think the last time we've scrimmed once before this 2k and we scrimmed once before uh, after the loss against bravado 3-0 so i can't see them turning this around but hey now we can see now we can see from bravado wasn't it a fluke what they did against energy esports in a 3-0 sweep and uh, can energy esports show us that hey it actually was a fluke it should never have been 3-0 yeah this is the end's uh, opportunity to um tie the score so to speak which maps are we playing on because if they actually have a good veto system i think that they can at least win two of the maps yeah, we'll uh, bring up the maps for you guys right away. And there we see it, Bravado versus Energy Esports, Asia GL 2K Final. And the first map is going to be Gridlock Hardpoint. So, uh, Sam, I, I can't call that first one. I know it's going to be very close. But then a very interesting search and destroy. It's going to be played on Payload. 
of all Ouch. of all maps to play on search and destroy all the teams just veto this team the this map immediately yes but we must just remember when it comes to HG, acgl there's no veto system it's uh, pre-picked maps so th it's not a map they can they can pick out hmm, that might have a, that might actually impact the series but going into the my predictions for it are going to be bvds both of them the control on gridlock it's more of a more of a 50 50 to be honest because especially on that a site if you play your trades correctly and if you have your entry sub doing uh just picking up that first kill and then you play the trades after that you can actually swing swing the map in your favor yeah indeed you can um and then following that search and destroy so i'm predicting a 3-1 a 3-1, okay, a 3-1 there. Yeah, for, for, for Bravado. For Bravado. Um, uh, then following that payload search and destroy, it will go back to gridlock for control this time around. Also going to be a very close match. But uh, I have to agree with you, Edgar. I do see a 3-1 scoreline for Bravado. I don't think Bra Energy Esports did enough um, uh, to get back at Bravado. Um, I just don't think they've done enough, but we'll see what they can do. Uh, we're going to try and join up. I can see some of the Ian guys already in a, a little free-for-all there. I don't see them gathering up in a, in a lobby yet. But uh, let's just talk about the previous LAN or previous minor. I, I, I just call it a minor as it's uh, obviously not a major. Most teams would have flown for it. But um, yep. just speaking about the ace LAN, I know there's a couple of teams that have signed up and... In the beginning of the year, I think we saw like 30 or 22, 23, 25 teams signed up. And uh, it has been slowly declining. I don't know why. I don't know why teams don't want to go anymore. I know some some players have some other responsibility somewhere. But if you've gone before and you have that date open, please make sure that you can attend every single land that there is. It helps the organizers to, to invest even more in the Call of Duty community in South exactly. Africa. So... They're never it just stand the back scene as well. Yeah. I think the the major thing is that like you have the ace wins and then judging from ace win performances, teams split up, which has happened this uh this this weekend, and it's it's a bit frustrating to see sometimes because there's players that are extremely talented that if they just picked up a set team, grinded with them, uh, resolved their issues and solved them properly. They could be up there. Indeed so, indeed so. And uh, for the guys in the stream, if you see in the chat, there's three logos for you to spam. You can just copy one of them and uh, paste the, them into the stream. It's the only three I can use. I only allowed three. And I know if you're a Bravado fan, you probably sub to, to Lithium. So if you uh, want a BVD spam there, you can always just go to Lithium stream and uh, subscribe to him and get that bvd logo into this chat but focusing on this map bravado energy esports edgar we saw that 3-0 sweep from bravado over energy esports what does energy need to be doing differently coming into this game generally playing their trays better and just making sure that their snd is on point making sure that they have new strats for snd or maybe just trying to Focus on their on their team play because I watched Bravado today playing the um, the round three of the 2K against the Wade on right, and their individual gun skill and this is something that we always talk about is insane. Period. But here's the thing: so is En. So if En just finds a way to play with their team, make sure they're trading out their kills, make sure that they're shoulder peeking a lot, because I see most teams that most teams don't do that. If they just find a way to play the game together and make sure that they're forcing those 2v1 gunfights instead of just trying to win their 1v1s, they can do something. They can at least, at the very least, win a map, if not more. Yeah, we'll see what they can do. Um, all I know is that NNG Esports needs to step up. Yes, you've not gotten enough practice in in this 2k. I can vouch that I've picked up for NNG Esports round 1, or oh no, 2 th and 3. So they've warmed up basically with their full squad for one game so they need to be firing going into this bravado game bravado obviously playing with their full squad from the start has that competitive edge over energy esports but 
that can't be lin lingering in the back of their minds as they go into this grand final. Then a just a little announcement. Thursday this week, Thursday 7 p.m., more or less the same time as now. It will be the same teams as now. It's Energy Esports versus Bravado for the Metal State Pro Series Group 1 match. And that will be Thursday night at 7 p.m. Don't know who my co-caster is yet, but I'll keep you guys up to date with that on uh, Twitter. But that's another big game to watch out for. And um, we that's possibly have another match straight after that one that uh, I'm keeping under the wraps for now because that might be just thrown to someone else to stream. We'll see what happens there. Uh, hopefully we can get that one out for you guys as well, but I don't see Bravado ready yet I know that the guys from Ian is in let me just message the guys from Bravado and yeah, what's going on? And as you do message them, let's talk about What one what the maps look like because we've discussed that before but at the same time What do you think that Ian since you're their manager? can do to, uh, at, at the very least, get a strong start on that gridwalk hardpoint. Well, getting that first initial pick, uh, if we're talking about hardpoint, just getting the team in the in the right lanes, watching the right areas, um, and then just getting that first row of kills, uh, that first five kills, just to push PVD or put PVD back on the back foot. If they can do that, they need to feed off each other permanently. Then the comms need to be high. They need to rotate on the correct time. We know how good PVD is with rotation. And if we're looking at Inferno, how good he is with uh, an ICI in hand, we need big, big games from uh, Inferno as well. Um, and then Energy needs to, to stop him. So firstly, it comes down to that initial pick. Watching your uh, your correct areas, getting those rotation down, and ultimately energy esports can maybe take that first map. But uh, when we look at that following map, search and destroy, I have no <laughs> clue what's going to happen there because I've never seen the map played against these two teams. Me neither. But Paywall is a map that I genuinely don't enjoy playing <laughs> playing yeah. on. I don't because... think anyone does. Yeah, it's just the bomb sites are just weirdly placed. Number one. Number two, there's really only two, yeah, because that third um, altar, altar area of the map, which is the by the rock and the um, the fuselage of that plane, it's very very narrow, and you can watch it pretty easily. So it almost becomes most of the time it becomes a non-factor in the map, and so you're just fighting for two or basically two areas of map control. And when you start planting bombs and everything, it's like the round is pretty much over. Yeah, it could be. I feel like a lot of teams have to play as well due to the map design. Uh, just looking, just getting back to the point on the bracket, Edgar, that it feels for me that the top teams are starting to just to slow down and, that, and the tier teams just below them and uh, teams like that of Oliver and Lord Louth, a team like that, a team like White Rabbit Gaming, a team like Vinko, they slowly but surely catching up to the top dogs. That's obviously your Ian and Bravado. Um, yep. Is it that Brav or the top teams are or the top two teams that's Ian Bravado are slowing down, or is it just the teams at the top or at the bottom just starting to catch up slowly? I would say a bit of both, since we're in February. Most team, most top teams know how to play the game now, or they know the very basics at the very least, and. Um, We've seen that due to uh, world shedding and other, and other issues, internet issues after world shedding, a lot of teams have not been able to scrim at all or have had one scrim in a week. And that also factors into, into that because there's teams that have no practice and can come out hot and there's teams that have no practice and they just stop not knowing how to play, but they stop doing their regular things in the in-game. And that ends up not being, uh, not being good for them. Yeah, I know, I know most of the people in the community, currently I know from White Rabbit we've got one guy that's a metric, I know Adam is still grade 7, no I'm joking, great, I think Adam is grade <laughs> 11 now, um, he's still very very young there, um, but uh, if we're looking at energy esports we've got major almost all of the players from, or we've got three players from energy esports that is in metric, so uh, it, it, it does run a toll on the guys, they won't have as much time to practice as they can 
But hey, if you're finding that little gap to get on and and uh, scrim, you need to give it your all, and uh, that's exactly. what every single team needs to do. Um, I'm just l listening from Lithium, waiting on team. He's just said he's waiting on his team to get things ready, and once that is ready, we will start the game. But for now, I'll check you guys when the game starts. Don't just don't leave. We will be right back, and. Please, if you're on Twitter, retweet the stream. Let's get as many people as possible in here. And uh, yeah, check you guys when the map starts.
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the wait, but you can see all the teams are almost ready. I can't wait for this one to start. It's another HGL 2K final between Energy Esports and Bravado Gaming. Edgar, if you're there, speak to me. I am not there. <laughs> Disappeared. We've waited long, long enough. It's been 40 minutes since we've gone live and we haven't had a map yet. But entertaining it will be Bravado versus Energy Esports. Run through the uh, through the lineup here quick. From Bravado, we got Scorpio, Cavs, Lithium, Rahil, and Inferno. And from Energy Esports, we have the Captain Frosty, Mickey, Heroes, Sharky, and Waffle. Two lineups that has the most talent that I've seen in a long while in the Codzera community. And these two is going to clash heads yet again. Previously, when these two teams met, we've spoke about it, Edgar. It was a 3-0 sweep for Energy or for Bravado, nevertheless. Yep. So, uh, Energy is definitely on the back foot from the start here. A hundred percent. And they have to win this first map. They have to win a twist this uh, twist this HP so that they can go to another respawn comfort. Because I'm pretty sure they're losing the SND. Bravado is just a very strong SND team in general. And um, with one of the other, if one of the other respawns don't go their way, then that's a three-one series or even a three-zero if they let the control go to uh, BVD's way. Yeah. 
No, that it could be, and uh, we're just waiting for Inferno to join up, and once he does, we will get this game underway. But uh, let's just quickly just have a little talk about predictions. Now, Edgar, I've put you on the spot quite a few times in streams, and uh, today is no different. I'm going to put you on the spot again. And uh, I want your <laughs> scoreline for me, every single map, and a series count. All right, so HP. 250, 180. I think it's going to be a relatively close map. S and D, 6 to Bravado as well. Control, 3 1 EN, and the, and the second HP will at 250, 160 towards BBD. Damn. Okay, so uh, let's hope uh, you got those ready. I'm going to bring up the maps for you guys to s let you guys know what he was talking about. So that first map is a gridlock hardpoint. And um, I'm definitely edging it to Bravard. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Being on the front foot and energy has something to prove, but I still think they don't have enough practice in to maybe cause this upset on map, map number one. I think Bravado there, 250... 198 close to a 200 point mark then we'll see that pay okay. load search and destroy where i think uh well i think bravado would walk away with it in a 6-4 score line and then uh that uh, that control on gridlock i'm gonna give it towards the guys from uh from ian and a 3-2 fashion it's gonna be really close i'm gonna mention that as well and then i can't see that in a well, maybe I can see energy maybe taking a frequency hard point. They've done it before I against don't. the like of Bravado. Um, and they, I think they 100 clubbed Bravado on this map before. So, I don't know. Maybe they can do it again. I just don't know. But I'm, I'm still edging it to Bravado, a 3-1 scoreline. Same here. It's just... Uh, without the practice that without the practice that Ian needs, it's hard to catch up to Bravado. Because they're always practicing, they're always, if they're not practicing, then they're watching and they're implementing. It is a concerning factor for uh, for energy esports. They might, just a, rem a reminder to everyone, energy or, uh, it's just a thing that we can look at as well between these two teams. From Bravado, we have all over 18 players. We have over 18 players from Bravado that... Yep can uh, practice 24 7 they can grind the game they can watch streams they can play gbs until two o'clock three o'clock the morning on weekdays so they got the competitive edge in certain circumstances like that one now where they have the time to do so and if you're looking at energy esports they've got three matriculants that uh, and we all know matric isn't easy to to pass or do good well to do exactly. well in and uh, and that's what it comes down to you don't want to just pass your matric, you want to do well in it. So, Energy Esports have, have a problem there, maybe you could call it a problem. Less grind, obviously. And then That's Waffle, Waffle's the only over-18 player in, or not now, well, happy birthday to Frosty, that was yesterday, so happy birthday yep. to him. And um, hope you enjoyed your 18th birthday. And yeah, so he joins to be the second 18-year-old in Energy Esports. Now, Edgar, now, oh, well, a question that was asked from the community earlier. I want to know from you, Portugal compared to South Africa, Call of Duty, is there a big, big gap in skill? Do you think, do you, well, do you, no. do, do you think Portugal has the advantage over Kodzere or vice versa? What do you think between the two I teams? Say, I would say that uh, there was one team in Portugal that was they broke up yesterday or two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, was iconic gaming, and they could 100% beat Bravado. I, from what I've seen them play, yes, they could. Now, the rest of the scene is still very, very, very much in construction. So it's pretty much the same thing that happens with Kazera. You have teams that break up every week, every two weeks, and they and that they don't get anywhere. Not because they don't, they're not talented but because they don't want to make things work and because they have a, a giant ego and don't want to uh, admit to their mistakes and fix them. Yeah, that could be. And 
counting down from five seconds. It is Energy Esports against Bravado Gaming in this ACGL 2K Grand Final. And we're going to kick it off with the captain from Bravado. He was my MVP the last time. The old. I just wanted to say. Oh boy. Let's kick it off strong. But uh, doesn't look like that's going to be the case as we restart this lobby. Um, getting to my point that I said about MVPs. Um, the last time these two teams faced off, it was a 3-0 sweep, as I mentioned, to Bravado. But the captain of Bravado was the one standing out for me. It was the one leading by example. It was the one in hardpoint dev that we totally missed on getting streaks. And he just showed, out, out, showed up out of nowhere to control things. And uh, he got that that our first hardpoint. He started off well. That search and destroy, he dropped TDM numbers. So the <laughs> search and destroy, Energy Esports are going to look up. Is going to look very close at uh, Lithium to not allow something like that to happen again. Indeed, and SD in general is just a map where if you lose the first two rounds, it's fine, but you need to make sure that nobody gets streaked. In Paywall, it's a, it's a little less important, but at the same time, if you let the other team go up 3 0, they're going to, even if you even out the, um, the score and you make it 3 3. In round count, the other team will still have their specialist faster than you, which is also something that you need to consider. Yeah, and uh, specialist plays such a big role in uh, the Black Ops franchise, and we can see with Black Ops 4 that uh, the War Machine, uh, the Annihilator, the when to use crash the appropriate time there's so many things that go into when to use what and it all comes down to comms yep. and uh, if both teams can uh, get their tom their comms to a top notch then i think it's going to be one hell of a game but as i mentioned i'm going to start off with uh, bravado gaming and that is with uh, the captain lithium and we'll see what he can do with the sorg in hand Exactly, as we're going off this break, I see that every team's running the usual setup, just one ICR. Things might change with the meta, but the meta hasn't uh, gotten here yet, so we'll have to see that next week. Anyway, going towards these first gunfights, we see both the teams just trying to contest. Heroes find steel with his ICR, Waffle with one as well. So a double ICR setup coming out from um, from Iena to start. The hard point is still contested, and the first points have gone towards Bravado, but... We see that Ian is still holding those spawns at the back. And look at player number six, Naughty Point. Oh, Kovs getting a beautiful hit there on a Mickey, but Frosty comes to clean up from behind, just getting Bravado out for the meanwhile. And it, it is a chat that you've just brought up that uh, the Maddox players, I don't know how they must feel at this stage, but uh, next week, Tuesday, there's a big update coming and it's going to throw things around a Side bit, I could say. And um, the nerf of the Maddox, Edgar, what do you think about that? Is it something that was bound to happen? Yes. Number one, yes, it was bound to happen. Number two, they over nerfed it, in my opinion. They did not need to nerf quick draw one, just quick draw two, because it aimed super quick. The Maddox uh, pre nerf, which is what we're seeing now, aimed in super fast, and it ended up beating subs at close ranges, and that's something that you never want. To have uh to have in a hybrid rifle you want to make sure that it's set in the middle of those two ranges so that it excels at medium range and not just close range as well my big now question. moving over to the game yeah my, my. EN, they've got a massive break here they're holding they've been holding this hill for around 20 seconds it seems like they'll get the scrap time as well but bravado does have the rotation look at those players one and two with him and support yeah. frosty is still an he's seven and two working uh or not working towards things is halfway to it, 370 off it. And at this point, the rotation is going to come down. But as you can see, all the blue arrows has rotated. They all set up a next. And it's going to be Ian that needs to break in. Is this maybe the highlight of this hard point where Bravado always has the upper edge against Energy Esports when it comes down to rotation? And Energy Esports needs to break it. And it looks like... Uh. They could have done it, but Lithium or Rahil got that great nade in there to just keep them out for the meanwhile. And Edgar, if we... My question back to that Maddox story is... Is, is the Maddox going to be that bad that people are going to be looking at maybe two ICRs now? It depends on the on how big the nerf to quick draw 1 and 2 was because if it doesn't aim in faster than 
than other assault rifles, for example, the Vapor without quick draw, then the Vapor will probably be used. But the problem is that the, the Maddox has a really fast time to kill, especially in that medium range. And it that just makes it worth it on its own. But we'll have to, we will have to experiment with the weapons. We'll have to experiment with the other new weapons in the, uh, in the meta that might be meta because we're not sure now. The Saga has also been nerfed. Is the Spitfire going to come in? Probably not because it's been nerfed as well. But it's just something that we'll have to see from Tuesday onwards because a lot of things were changed. Yep, it's been. And another thing that has been changed is the GA, the general, the gentleman's agreement with uh, the, yep. uh, with the, what, what's that gun called again? The, the Mosu being in the GA now for non-respawn game modes so in games like search and destroy the Moser is not allowed I don't know if the teams will be using it a year but uh, I, I think that's an, another huge factor because let's face it all the pistols are probably garbage but the Moser yep they are compared to the Moser all the pistols are really bad and it will just it will just make your sniper player in SMD much less effective because if he doesn't, if he does not hit his sniper bullets, then that player is basically a non-factor on the map. Now, going back to this game, we see that Bravado got a good hold on that P4 hill, tried rotated well towards this first hill, but Ian just broke that setup. Heroes with two as well. Now, full control of both the hill and spawns for next, but there's still 40 seconds in the hill. Let's see if Bravado can break this. And this is the chance now for them. They are pushing up. Can. Lithium find a killer and he does just that, but uh, kills are rotating out and it looks bravado like they have the upper hand coming into that turnover bus. And uh, the rotation gonna come down and it's gonna be led by none other than Inferno. Inferno spotting two players of energy esports crossing there. And uh, Heroes comes out on top, finds another one. So it does clear the path of rotation, but BVD is sticking over nicely here at the middle. Bravado still still in this hill. Crash has been popped by Ian. Let's see if they follow that up with another special, which, which is what I would really like them to do. And as we go towards this rotation on the second hill, we see that Ian has spawns. They for, they're forcing all Bravado players to push through the front, which is very good for Ian. But those players seem to just be pushing in. Now the War Machine comes in from, from a hill, gets one. Tempest comes in from Frosty. Rahil finds another one, but he's tagged in the process. Can... Yes, they do finish him up. Which means that uh, if all goes according to plan, Ian will have uh, the rest of this hill time. But not if Lithium has anything to say about it. Yeah, we'll see now some of the guys from Bravado. Let's play with one and four Kovs and Lithium coming in from behind to possibly break them from behind. And it looks like they can't get that done as Energy Esports stands tall. But look at play number three. I, as I mentioned, it is always Bravado with the rotations. And look at that. Rahil is set up. Yes, he maybe misused or not, or not used his war machine at the correct time there. Uh, but uh, we'll see now if Sharky can capitalize on his uh, as he has it. As shots go down on him. Mickey has pulled out the Annihilator. Let's see if he can clutch up. Finding one only. Oh! Missing a couple of yeah. shots, turning around, can't get the kill. Only left with Kovs at the current next. And Energy Esports do a great job to, to break through. Exactly, Yen does a great job breaking through through the use of, down, uh, of that Annihilator. And they just pick up all the kills after that. Now they leave, they leave BVD spawning uh, split. Which means that they will be trying to pinch this kill from both sides. And that might spell out trouble for Yen for the last 20 seconds of this kill. Mickey does pick up his lightning strike though. And a Hellstorm now. Can he find the uh, the sniper's nest? He yes, does. he does. Yes, but he the does. hill gets broken in the process. And look at where Ian is spawning now. Everyone's spawning at the back of that second hill. Heroes is the closest to this next hill, the fourth one. And the last on the rotation. Does he find a gunfight? Yes, he does find a gunfight on Scorpio. Now, this means that everyone from BBD is going to be spawning at the back rock area. You just saw that player number two, Scorpio, who just died, spawn there. And these gunfights for this hill are going to be one of the most important in this, in this entire game. That is indeed, and you can see the score line uh, just what 15 points apart. Some score streaks being used by Energy Esports. Three players fall from Bravado. Uh, Inferno at least finding one, but it is Energy Esports in there. Sharky did use his war machine, not picking up 
even one kill but the score streaks being the difference between these two teams thus far and uh, we'll exactly. see now if the rotations come back to mid as mickey hasn't popped his uh, sniper nest or his his uh, lightning strike yet not yet but you do you probably will see him pop it for this so maybe not because Ian has already set up on this next hill on this first one. Well, let's find a two piece. Mickey still with one on Inferno, trying to destabilize the, brava the Bravado setup or, or their rotation for the next hill. And as you look at over at the mini map, you see that it is just full of Ian players and BVD has not been able to touch it so far. Can they do that for the rest, for the other 60 seconds now that the hill is popped? Hey, we can just do that, Heroes. Having a big uh, game here, might come in behind, but Inferno has that Tempest out, does find one, finds the second there at middle area as well. But is this going to be the time Mickey maybe invests his Lightning Strike, might just pop it from the back. We're going to jump on board with him as he respawns, and he does just that. And this should be the go-ahead for Energy Esports now to push up, but play number three is Rahil. He's going to be the guy that needs to push in and maybe break them from the side. Can't find the kill there. So Energy Esports standing tall right yet again in that middle area. Trying to maybe each their way closer to the final here. Play number seven. Waffle is rotated. Cobbs finds three. Might just <laughs> crawl their way back into this is Bravado, but big plays from Energy is needed now. And the Annihilator from Kofs trying to destroy a Sniper's Nest does that effectively, which means that that, that score streak is now no longer a factor in this game, but look at your specialists. You have both, you have both Gravity Spikes. Frosty has his, has his uh, Tempest again, but even better, Ian has, Ian has a full setup for the second hill. They can definitely finish it here, Dalry. And the Tempest has just been popped. Yeah, can be. I think uh, he shot his own teammate there. Tempest, probably one of the mo the weapons online that you barely can hit shots. But Frosty makes it look easy as he finds a couple there. Energy Esports now only 15 seconds away from taking this first hard point. Something that we both didn't predict. But let's see what they can do. Euros is playing a filthy corner here as he knows they need to push up. Uses his gravity slam. But Sharky takes him out with his nade. And this should be it. Energy Esports take this first hard point 250 184 and uh, sh well shocks me because uh, energy hasn't really gotten any, any practice before this game we've got a game on our hands in our hands Dari. that's for sure if they play like this in the in the next hard point they can definitely take the series because i'm fully expecting them to lose the snd right it's payload they haven't practiced etc etc but that control if they win the control, they might be able to pull out a 3-1, or at the very least a 3-2. Yeah, well, we'd love to see a 3-2 scoreline. Always like to see that map 5, round 11 between the two captains. You never know. Just far-fetched <laughs> at this point, but that first hard point Just does go to, to Energy Esports. Well played by them. If, if we just look at the usage of specialists, Energy Esports had the advantage, Edgar. Indeed, they had the advantage. The... Uh, that... The Tempest was popped perfectly. The War Machine was not sure if the War Machine actually got kills by Shocky. Not 100% on that. And just the specialist usage was just better. They just ended up getting more kills out, especially on that um, on the third hill. When Mickey popped his Annihilator, instantly got a kill. His teammate, I think it was actually Heroes, got the second kill on rotation to break the PVD setup, and they ended up getting most of the time off of that. And keeping the spawns on rotation for the fourth hill, from that third to fourth hill. And that gave him a, a 30 second swing, because at that point, the game was pretty much tied. And then and then in the end, just surged forward those points on, all over on the third and fourth hill, and, the, and then the mid hill that ended up being contested, which is the, the average. And again, they rotated better. For the uh, from the first to second hill to to hold our last hill and get all the all the points that they needed to get. Yeah, it, for for me it comes down to we saw Bravado a couple of times rotating early and getting set up, but Energy Esports, let's say 20 seconds down the line, they broke back in and they got the points. Yep. So it's something that Bravado will obviously be looking at after the series or the following hard point to come. It's probably what they're speaking about now that that something like that can't happen. But uh, just have a look at Bravado Inferno with only 5 seconds in heal and uh, I, I can't lay on this fact any longer that or any more that it is needed, the heal presence is needed, you need 
to get closer to the hill and, and uh, get in and out, you know, rotate the hill and communicate with your players when to jump in and when to not. And uh, yep. if you're dropping only five seconds in hill, it's something you definitely will be looking at if you're bravado. Exactly. And as we pull the scoreboard up, as I see that you have it on stream, it's look at the engage from the first three players on, on bravado and from the first three on EN. Multiple 30, multiple 30 EKIAs, which means that the team shot was definitely on from, from EN. And more over in the 20s area for the for the BVD players, which means that um, it just they were trying to win those 1v1s, and there wasn't really that much team support. Because EKIA isn't just about kills, right? EKIA yeah. shows that you tag a teammate, you tag a, an enemy player, your teammate gets a kill, you get one EKIA, correct? Correct. So as you walk over towards the scoreboard, we can actually see the, the actual amount of engagements that happened across the map. And EN, the, their top three players here on the scoreboard have more engagements than the top three of VVD. And we also see Scorpio with 40, uh, 37 engagements. In, and that, that, might, that might just mean that BVD either didn't play it as a team or they played it too slow. Yeah, that could be a telling factor. And just having a look at Frosty, almost 6k damage. So you know he's been tagging up players and uh, the comms definitely on the eye of energy esports. And uh, the momentum, you could probably say, is in Ian's hand at this point. But uh, in the back of their mind, they must probably still be thinking... Guys, we've lost 3-0 against Bravada. Let's do it to them back and uh, get them back <laughs> for it. So maybe that's what Energy Esports is here out to prove it, to think maybe that was a fluke. But uh, against a team like Bravado, it's not going to be easy. It definitely won't be. And I, if, as I've said before, this is probably the fourth time that, I've, that I'm saying this, but I fully expect them to lose the S&D. But at the same time, we expected Ian to, to lose the first hard point as well, though, right? So, who knows at this point? Yeah, who knows at this point. Um, but we'll see now as uh, the following map is to come, and that's Payload, Search and Destroy. It's going to be one heck of a game. Um, I don't think both teams has too much practice on this map, and I know most teams don't even scrim the Search and Destroys. So I can't even tell you a yep. scoreline that will be happening or will happen here. It's going to be crazy. Me neither. I'm, uh, I'll try and throw one out there. I'll throw a 6-3 to BVD. But <laughs> anything can happen in this in this map, especially because you have that tunnel area where usually the offense gets there slower, even if they were if, even if they're using lightweight and dexterity on their classes, and it ends up being those first picks. And this is where you see a lot of sniper rifle use on this map. It's all uh, to B site. You end up getting a first pick on B. You end up either putting the bomb down or making sure that you play the trace to get a win that round. But at the same time, not running a sniper, if you can't find that first pick, you still have a chance to do a 5v5 retake. So you have a bunch of ways to play this map, but you need to be trying to get that bomb as soon as possible because I've, what I've noticed is that even in pro team games, the this map the rounds just go on for far too long there's no team that actually gets some map control or site control and the round ends up getting decided by time yeah and we can see now and you mentioned the word sniper and if i just think about sniper i'm looking at bravado inferno as they stop the that game there i don't know why yes yeah, he uh, spawned on the wrong team i think oh beautiful I five to Sharky, everyone Wait, tweet him. I five, bro. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, I think he did. I think he's he was on the on that side and then switched back. I don't know. But uh, we'll restart uh, this game and I can see we've got pan ditch underscore ZA underscore that word. <laughs> saying bro what is happening oh it's the commentators what's the commentators i don't know you can enlighten me but uh we can see mr tupman and uh i know it must hurt at this point that you've lost against uh i think it was a pickup team there i don't know what vinko they definitely gonna be raging after losing in that uh i think it was the quarterfinals where they would have pitched up against energy esports but i don't know 
that's uh, next two case problems. So hopefully, Vinko can hit back their quality team with quality players. And uh, remember, Walla was picked up for Vinko Gaming in Jaffs was dropped. So he is Vinko's new new fifth. But exactly. They've not gotten enough practice. We saw that. It's back to the drawing board for them. They need to get practice in. They in uh, also the pro series in group two. So they gonna be facing some tough opponents. And uh, Pandit, you're asking what is the map count? Exclamation mark MC. And you've got that one right there for you. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that usually ask. But just using that exclamation mark MC. As my boy Edgar shows you there. Easy to find it. But we're gonna start off with uh, Bravado Inferno with the snipes. Indeed, as both teams surge towards sites, we'll see what BBD actually chooses to do. It's sort of a split setup for um, for EN. It's a standard setup that I've seen a bunch of teams use a lot. Players one and five, they're trying to find a pick on tunnel, trying to spot someone. But it seems like all the pressure from BBD is going towards today. So players number ten and seven need to be careful and not not over challenge. Waffle does find a pick on Cops, dude. With the help of players 9 and 8, that's Shaki and Frosty. Frosty finds one on Scorpio as well over that tunnel. And now that the NS tunnel control and a 5v3 advantage, this round needs to be over. Yeah, they've got that first blood and we know how crucial that is in search and destroy. Mickey gets away with his life as in Rahil picks him up. We all know, all know how deadly that man shot is. He barely loses one and he spots another player there from Energy Esports. He knows he has a sniper so backs out. It is a 3v4 currently in with the advantage. Indeed, and still with the advantage at a 4v3 adv <laughs> man advantage as well. Bomb seems to be going down on Ian. No. Inferno does find Chucky. Waffle would one on with him. Rahil would one on Waffle to, to get a trade out of that. Now it's a 2v2. 1v2 now for Inferno. Can he clutch this? Not enough time. Can he find heroes here? Oh, this is close. Nope. <laughs> Almost. It's not going to happen, but uh, a good search and destroy round. Uh, Energy Esport wasn't over eager. They didn't push up too far. They got the initial picks and just. And, and just pull back, so a good S&D round there. Good S&D round from, uh, from a Yen indeed, it's just... They were at a 5-3 and that got way more complicated because the player that was at the back rock, I think it was sniping, ended up falling. In that situation, just shoulder peek that angle, make sure that, BVD, that the BVD players can't push through it because it's a, quite a narrow area. But anyway, now we see Yen on the offense doing a similar push, like BVD. As BVD did the last round, can they find that all crucial first blood? Now with no shots and snipes will come down. The snipe can Sharky get past. He is in a very tight spot at the moment. He needs to get out there as he's crawling, duck and diving, leopard crawling. He does get underneath window and the call should come from Bravado just to check out. But Waffle with some good ICR shots gets through and uh, Rahil doesn't need to get over eager. There's, there's two players from Energy Esports there. And look at what player number six is doing there. That's heroes. He's making sure that the players on tunnel cannot push him. Now, if they do pick up this kill, it's fine because they've already wasted 10 seconds. But the sun comes in. Heroes finds one with the help of his teammate. Can he find Inferno as well? On the other side of the map, Frosty has found one. With him has gotten Shaki, the bomb player, so streaks won't be an issue. And it is now 3v2, 3v1 now advantage for EN and this round's over. Another good search and destroy around. It is uh, quite surprising for me the way that uh, Ian is playing this SNT. They've literally not put a foot wrong, and uh, I can see this. I can say the same from Bri from Bravado. They're also not over eager to push further than the bomb, but Energy is just having a good SNT so far. Exactly. Over on the start of that round, they allowed uh, BVD allowed Chucky to push up to the bomb and plant it because you had Waffle watching over him. Waffle did end up picking up the first blood over on that tower area. And just allowing Shaki to put the bomb, to cross to the bomb and put the bomb down shows very good team play out of Yen on that round. Now, up to well, can they do anything on this defense? Are they doing anything different different from the past de from their past defense? Nope. BVD seems to also be doing the same setup. Will they be able to find a pick this time or will Yen go up 5-3 in man count like they did? 
the round oh, before. Oh, Scorpio with a great shot there on Frosty, absolutely gunning him out. And he just pulls back as they have that man advantage now. And it's all bravados to lose in this round. And they just need to stick together. For me, the man to look out for now is the shot caller Inferno. He's the IGL for Bravado. He needs to orchestrate this this push and get the bomb down to win this round. Indeed, as we've, we're seeing quite a slow round coming out of both teams. Still a 5v4 advantage for BBD, but 30 seconds left. They need to put this bomb down or find out all, all the other four members. Bomb seems to be going down over on the A side. Rahil finds a pick on Miki over on the space area as the bomb goes down, so it is now 5v3 advantage for BBD. And we see that the player that the players from Iena are quite trapped in that back area. Can player number eight, Shaki, find a pick? Heroes does find one. Rahil gets a trade. This round should be going to BBD. 27 seconds left in a 2v4 situation. No way that the AN players can do anything. Yeah, indeed not. And uh, a great bounce back for Bravado. They didn't, uh, they just hang back. They waited for the opening to get the bomb down, got it down. And uh, just had a good all round push to A. And uh, we usually see teams flooding B to get the bomb down. And here we see both teams going uh, or, or preferring the A site, and we'll see if things uh, are different this time. If, yeah, if it goes differently this time around, Sharky is 0-3. He needs to pick things up for Energy Esports, and so is Mickey. And it uh, looks like another A push. Indeed, another A push. Same setup from both teams coming over on the defensive side. Three towards the, the A side, and two towards B. Slight, slight adjustment this time, actually, from BBD. They actually sent 3 to A and 2 to B instead of 3 to B to 2 A. But anyway, bomb's going down again by Sharky, putting that bomb down. Control of the side seems to have been achieved by Ian, and now they'll just seem to watch over the bomb, get their picks. They just found two. Again, in a 5v3 situation where he'll just find one. Inferno with the sniper with another one, and this round has just opened up. Waffle was playing some weird angle there that I've just proning in the middle of nowhere picking up uh, lithium there But it's gonna be playing number five is Kovs. He's 0-3. He also needs to pick things up at this stage Do you jump off the map? Yeah, yep, there he goes. Jerio taking a dip as uh, Kovs just gets those jumping down. He's 0-4. So uh, a Class caliber guy like uh, Like Kovs, it's not usually what you see and it seems like he is going to prove us wrong here yet again, Dare. Three, three to one round advantage. And it's... If they keep playing this way, if they keep getting that bomb down over on the A side and B, while BBD can't do anything, they will 100% win this map just based on their offensive, on their offenses. Now, BBD does need to win this round because a 4-1... A Round count to a 3-2 to a is a big deal, and they seem to be pushing B this time. It looks like a lithium is uh, in the way of Inferno Snipes. They can't pick up a Frosty duck and diving. I <laughs> don't know how Inferno didn't hit that shot. It was so, so close. But a different threat coming in from Bravado. And my big thing is, if we just look at the top side, and we look at the specialists, how close... Ian is to getting their specialist, and how far Bravado is from getting theirs. So, uh, a big difference in it, and it's Tooth. Make that three down for Bravado. Inferno picking up one. Make that a second. Oh no, my gosh. <coughs> but, it, but it falls from behind as I get a asthma attack, and um, hopefully, a good attack from, from, uh, from Bravado. And it doesn't look like it as uh, the last one's alive. Is that uh -oh. captain makes it a 1v1. What are we seeing? Is this going to be possibly a round that energy throws away? This could be a 1v3 for Lithium, but you see player number 7 Waffle playing it extremely well, just backing off, not playing, not playing for the trade on heroes. And Bomb's now going to get planted by Lithium. Waffle seems to be on the right path. And he will surely catch him planting. If he does look, he might have bad timing here. Oh, some Lithium bad shots. Never mind the, the timing, but the bad shots. As he gets onto Bomb. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah oh. oh, no, Captain uh -oh. Lithium on the job! Oh! Wait! No, he got it. <laughs> lithium he got, got it. He got it. He got Captain it. Lithium. Got it, Captain Lithium on the job. He's not a guy that you're gonna bamboozle like that, but it's a round energy threw away. They were. The, the, the captain just. 
You were 1v3! We were 1v3 and all the end players decided to 1v to 1v1 him for the front of round win, so... You ended up finding the gaps between all those three players, picking up those three players separately. Just nice work from Withium and very bad end of the round from Ian there. You'd want to go for one. Now, consequences of that. Withium's close to streaks, 325 off of a lightning strike. And Withium has gravity, gravity spikes. And his grapple, again. Yeah, let's stick on board with him then. See what he can do with it. And is this the switch he needs? He does spot two. Is this where he pulls out his gravity slam? He's just peeking. He and he would have used it if he saw more. But uh, he's got an open sight. They does find one. Can't find a second, unfortunately. But it's Inferno and Scorpio, the only two left alive for Bravado. And for me, Bravado just gets laid out so quick from the start. Uh, do they switch things up, Edgar? What's going on? What's going on is that they're not... When, they're, when they push T over towards that tunnel area, they end up not ha not getting those kills there, even though they get there faster. Now, Shaki does pick one here, which means that it will be a 3v1, uh, 1v3 for Inferno. Can he clutch up like his teammate just did? Probably not. Bomb's going down, he has no intel on it. That's fine. But going back to the analysis of that round, it's just... At the start, the BVD players are, not, are losing their trades because they're not offering enough support on teammates. As you see, the player on T was alone there. He could have 100%, that was with him, he could have 100% found one, but he had to play his wife so that he wouldn't get traded immediately after. And he was also close to streaks. And so that those shots that he puts onto Mickey end up being irrelevant, and then there's nobody to help him for his trade. And it ends up just being a 3v2 in favor of Ian. Yeah, and the big thing coming from that round was that uh, Ian uh, stopped the Captain Lithium before he got closer to any streaks, and uh, Inferno could have jumped off the map, would have made, wouldn't have made a big difference, but hey, well, the difference makes that that little 20 points, 25 points help so much towards streaks, and if we're looking at Specialist, Frosty, he's got the Tempest, we've got Shark, he's got the War Machine, we've got Waffle with the 200 crash, is both teams going to invest now? We don't know. Let's see what Lithium does. Crash coming from Ian. Oh, yes. That crash. This is out. Ian's round to lose. They're on defense. They have War Machine. They've just popped Crash. Inferno finds one with a Tempest. Can he find more than that? Bomb's going down over at the A site. Ian's players have backed off wisely. Waffle does find a pick that he shouldn't have gotten. And that just opens up the round now. Frosty with Can the, the Tempest players on Tunnel well. do something? Yeah, Frosty with the Tempest out as well. And I think both teams' Tempest is now burn and gone. And it's a 3v3 three, a three currently. 25 seconds to work with. They know where Inferno is. Inferno might fall. Yes, he will. Sharky gets another one. And it's all up to Kovs. Kovs is 0 and 6, ladies and gentlemen. Not something that you would see. Can he find one? Yes. And finally he does find one. Somebody needs He's, to get on bomb. Yeah, somebody needs to get on bomb. And I think that is... Frosty, but well played by Bravado yet again. They He played the time, and uh, those two kills that Kov's gotten, he was just that... He was just so invested in that bomb that energy couldn't have left him alone. And uh, a good round from Bravado. they keeping it close, Edgar. Yep, and again, Ian did not watch all their angles, and they ended up having to fight a 1v1 gunfight over, that, over at the top A area. Kovs won that, and as soon as he wins that, there's 12 seconds off the, on the clock, and whoever was on bomb hops off of it. And when that happens, you just need to you just need to play away for five more seconds and just get the kill on the bomb, and you'll be fine. You'll be winning the round. So that player that was on bomb should not have hopped off. I know that Kovs was really close to him, but his teammate could have watched over him in the position where he was. Yeah, now, now let's, yeah, let's talk specialist that was burned. We have exactly. Tempest from both teams over the gone. We've got Crash from Ian that's gone. And uh, from Bravado, we only have Lithium with the Gravity Slam. Currently, Rahil's very, very close to that War Machine and Shocky as he's already. Indeed, and it seems, seems like Ian's going for the, the traditional A push now, but they're playing a little bit slower because they know that their specialist on the line. Waffle trying to find Rahil over at the rock area. Tags him up. Not able to finish it. Regardless, 
Still a very slow round of us in the 40, 40 seconds over on the quad. Shaki trying to put the bomb down again. He does cross, but Kov's... Coach to streaks. Kov's caught Big him. Thing. Yes, he will be 75 off after he finishes this. War Machine coming out from, from Shaki. Does he find Kov's? No. Black Jacket plays its role effectively. Spams the other two grenades. Can't find anything. Frosty does find one, however. 5v4. Oh, and here comes the streaks for, for Shaki. With the help, Lightning for, uh, for Shaki. Oh. 4v3. Inferno just taking the wrong turn there. He would have gotten Waffle from behind. But it is all up to Inferno now to clean things up in a 1v4 situation. And he gets taken out. And it was an important round win for Energy. As they won a round away from taking the search and destroy now. Could be a 6-3 scoreline. We did say that maybe... Well, we did say that Bravado is going to take that first map. We thought Bravado is going to take the second map, and that's not going to happen. Or might could be, still yeah. happen, you never know. But uh, round yep. win there for Energy Esports, and the big play there was Sharky with those streaks. But both bombs is uh, covered, so uh, how is he going to use it? We don't know. We'll see now as uh, Lithium and Rahil oh, has those specialists to work use with. It today. You can definitely use the uh, the very least of lighting in Hellstorm today. Regardless... This game should have been over. There were two 1v3 clutches from BBD. That should not have happened. This game should have been over two rounds ago. Heroes find still with the gravity swam. This is the end's game to lose now. Will we find Inferno as well? Yes, with the help of Frosty. Rahil's the last one alive and he's stuck. That, okay. that was 30 seconds and over. That was the quickest round of Search and Destroy that I've seen. But, uh, but Ian... I'm their manager, and um, I can tell you now that this team hasn't been practicing. They've got one scrim in this whole week after being 3 0'd by Bravado. I don't know what's happening. Are they now Are they awake? Have they, have they drunk? <laughs> uh, they, have they, do they have like 10 monsters down them? I don't know, but uh, the search and destroy looked so, so good. A couple of mistakes, obviously, by Ian getting that, getting 1v3'd by Lithium. Um, but and coughs and coughs, but ultimately a good S and D by by Ian. Yes, indeed, better S and D, a better team play in S and D by Ian than um than by BVD. And you saw Frosty pick up a lot of two pieces, and in most of them he had support from a teammate, so he wasn't just taking on the one v one gunfight twice. He was actually waiting for his teammate to push up, shoulder peeking, challenging with his teammate. He ends up getting all those two pieces that just end up breaking the map over on uh, over for EN, and they just get map control off of that. They they always got the plant down when they went A. I think there was only one round where they actually did not were not able to plant A, and that's something that BVD will want to have back. Will want to watch out to watch after this map and after this game. Yeah, for me, Bravado just started too slow in this SND. Kovs was 0 and 6 at a stage. Something that you don't really see from him. Scorpio, 3 and 8. He hasn't had a good series thus far. We know he was the... I think it was bottom lobby for Bravado in that hard point. Um, but the captain and Inferno, Rahil, obviously, as well. Um, doing good, good so far. But this Energy Esports team, look at Frosty. 16 and 4. And 4. That, that's what I'm talking about. TDM numbers on Search and Destroy. So what Lithium did against them, two, what, a week ago? When the 3 out sweep them, but uh, backing that up is Sharky as well. 11 and 5. Bringing up the maps now, it's getting interesting. It uh, is Ian going to do the same thing that Bravado did uh, to them a week ago? But uh, we'll have to see now. It's possible. Going, it is possible. We're going back to gridlock now, and it is control. Now we know how good BVD is on, is on control, but it can. Uh, who do you. Can you give this to Bravado now? But because Ian is really is looking really really hot at this stage. Let me check with him stream see how tilted he is and then I'll tell you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's this map can definitely. I'm predicting a three L Bravado. They need to bounce back here and they will. Um. Yeah, we'll see. And Pand I'm just well. reading what Pandich says. He says GG. They already won two matches. Bravado is officially not the best team anymore. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. This game, the series is not over yet. We have another map to come, and if Bravado can pitch up and take this control, we might have a another two match, two maps, another map, or a good series on our hand. So don't count them yep. yet. 
Don't count Bravado out. We've seen them on control. Ian dropping a strike team against them. And they still come back to take the control. So this isn't over. We'll see what they can do on gridlock control. Get your predictions into the chat. Um, Edgar, I know you said from the start this was Ian's map. And so did I. Do you now turn that around? What, what yeah, you saying? I do turn that around. I don't think that VVD is getting 3 0 in series, in the in map count. I think they're 3 0 them in control here. They need to make a statement, and I think that they will. They're just a better uh, control team in general. But, chat, DVD needs your help. So, spam the avocado to help Bravado. Thank you. <laughs> that's one Let's way. See if you can pull that, this out. Yeah, that's one, one way series. to do it. And Bravado needs your support right now. Prophecy is saying that's going to be 3 1. So, if it's going to be that, then Bravado needs to take this control. And apparently, which yet again, Ian is destroying them. I hope they win. Good luck, BVD. Uh, well, BVD needs all the luck they can get. Uh, this <laughs> might be the last map. Ian needs to come out firing. So does Bravado. And we're kicking it off with the captain of uh, Ian this time. And that is Frosty. Indeed, Frosty has uh, the pressure actually from Bravado. Comes over all the B side. And they're already starting to capture it. Look at the naughty flank from Frosty himself. But a tick has been acquired over from BBD at the B side. And they seem to be finding all the kills that they need right now to keep it and capture it. It's just been captured now. Look at the kill difference. Just three. Still three. But now look at that player number four. Those players that come out of spawn from BBD are are just going to over towards that A side. Because they spawn at the back area, at that Koi area. And... If they win those gunfights, it, it could spell out trouble for Ian. But there's four players swarming Red Hill over on that A site. And albeit BVD had a good start, Ian seems to have bounced back and they have map control. We'll see now as Frosty gets some ridiculous kill there on Lithium taking care of him. And it's going to be a battle for this A site. Plan number four, keep an eye on him. It's always Inferno with these sneaky, sneaky flanks. Can Ian finally just pick him up? Oh. And Waffle is right there. Euros is there as well. So good read from Ian to know there's someone from Bravado pushing that at the back. And it looks like a good hold from Ian so far. And it, they've got three kills to to show for it. Indeed, a good hold from Ian so far. But th here's a problem with this site. You get a single wave of kills and that site can just be broken. And look, BBD got two kills. They managed to push up to this A site. If they find more than that, not if Frosty has anything to say about it though. If they find more than that, they can definitely capture the site before EN gets there. Yeah, they can indeed, and they need to stop Frosty. He's getting streaks. Cobbs is still there. He still oh, takes out his own teammate, is Frosty. This man is ready for it. And uh, he can find another one. He's got oh, his streaks as well. He's only one kill away from getting that lightning strike off that sniper nest. And unfortunately, couldn't as Rahil has something to say of that and they break in still three kills between these two teams as it all looks orange in that kill feed oh boy 16 to 10 now a six live advantage in favor of EN. the bbd players are all coming out of their spawn can they break this the setup that EN has is just at the moment it's really powerful because you have everyone watching their angles and you have people People shooting multiple enemy players at the same time, and BVD cannot get a foothold on this. They need to find these two oh, kills, players look, number 7 and 10, and they look, just can't. Look at that. they all flooding one doorway. It's uh, What are they doing? Bravado just does not look like Bravado at all. They're all flooding one doorway and getting stuck in, in the doorway and uh, getting taken out. Frosty only died three times that entire round. He's 9 and 3, and has streaks. If... This isn't a dominating first round. I don't know what is. This round was just... It's, it's crazy. A, it's a speechless round. It's something that I've never seen the teams do. Three people flooding one door. And getting stuck uh, um, from Bravado, it's something that you don't obviously expect because they have a, they're a top team and most people regard them as maybe the, the best team in COD today. But 
at this stage it doesn't look like it and I'm gonna start I'm, I'm just gonna stay on board with frost he's 11 and 3 and they're doing exactly what Bravado did at the start flooding B makes sense with the drone squad that they just popped will they be able to find the only one player there that's inferno they do find him up after 20 seconds and they already have the first tick BVD is probably just trying to break this one time then they're going to give this up look at cops on the flank player number three on you does he find one player he has to eat back he get he gets back down so th this first side is all going towards en right look at the kill difference as well you have a five kill difference haven't, they're just pushing they haven't lost straight the gun to fight. bvd spawn they haven't lost the gunfight yet there's still flawless from them oh boy this is not what we were expecting, Dari, but anyway, BBD still have a chance of pulling this out. They just need to stop the bleeding on their side, make sure that they're getting their trades in. Look at Mickey, player number seven on the minimap, going on a flank towards a rock area. Does find Scorpio, which now means that the BBD players inside the A side are split. And Ian is just capturing this right now. They just need to find these next set of kills and they will they will win this round as well. Take it to a 2 well. Now look at your specialists. Ian is almost as close as VVD is. Probably more. Waffle has his crash. Mickey's one kill off of his Annihilator. Hero's the same thing with for his gravity spikes. Shaki's still two or three kills off the War Machine. The crash has been... Scorpio has popped it. But at a 15 to 20 disadvantage, you still have to favor EN to win this round. Oh, and then we can see Bravado fighting their way back into it. And as you mentioned, it isn't over. Bravado is in. But uh, Ian still needs only one tick at the B-bomb site. Is Ian going to do the same thing to flood just one route? And it doesn't look like it as they've <laughs> watched the mistakes that have Bravado has made. Rahil throwing a nade over. The crash has been popped for Ian. And they've got a 9 kill advantage at this stage. And they get the tick. And that's round number 2 for Ian. Round number 2 for Ian. They have all the specials that they need. This. Wow. Just wow. Nine, there's a 90% chance of this being a 3-0 control, ending up in a 3-0 series. And the worst part is, even if you, even if EN loses this round and BBD, and BBD gets their specialist, EN will still have their specialist as well. Yeah, so it is in the reading, reading what the guy says on Twitch. It is Gambit on Twitch saying, if BBD lose, can we send EN to the CWL open bracket instead? Um, I don't know so much of that. Maybe BVD just having an off map or off day. You never know. But uh, it is Could now be. a flood to A this time. And Mickey has pulled out the Annihilator from the start. Need an hour from the start. We'll see if you, can, if you can find more than one. No, he doesn't. The trades over on the, uh, over on the A side. Go in favor of BVD. And they'll be for sure capturing the A side. And... As the as Ian tries to stop them, if they get this wave of kills, it still won't really matter because they already have two ticks. BVD already has two ticks on the site. The trace do go in favor of Ian on this on this A site, and look at them. They're just rotating, making their way over to B without any opposition. Smart play from BVD here, but they need to watch their flank effectively. Yeah, they need to. They need to win their gunfights now, and it's going to be quite easy for them. Just to rotate back to A and get one more tick as Inferno guns waffle there just with a couple of HP to spare. It's still 23 all make that one ad man advantage for Bravado at this stage. Where is their ticker at the moment? No one is in the hill so we can't see. Oh, it's taken. So this should be an easy capture for Bravado as they uh -oh. only need one pick at A. Yes, indeed. They just they played it very smart this round. The rotation from from A to B, despite having two ticks over on the A side. Now it's all going to come down to these last few gunfights for A control. The graph spike does get used by by heroes. He finds finds nothing. Gets two piece by Rahil. Cops with one as well. That's a they have an advantage over here on the A side. Frosty is the only one that can stop them. Can he be the this magic be man? It. No, he cannot. This should, this be, should be it. it. Yeah, it's only one tick that they need. And if we switch to Bravado, we can see them getting that first tick. So it's definitely not that 3-0 sweep on uh, on control. But it's still them needing to fight Bravado. As Energy Esports is only one round away from taking this control. Bravado still fighting for all they're worth. 
and they don't want to go down and give Ian any sniff of a 3 0. Indeed, and now as we look at the specialists, I was noticing that they that Ian used practically all of their specialists this round, and that they only have the war machine left on Shaki. On the other side, BVD does have uh, pretty much all of their specialists except the war machine that they used last round and the crash that they used on the second round. This is very possible to make a comeback. It all depends on these initial set of gunfights, and it looks like Ian is going to do the, the B play again. Cool, the but final with the uh, Tempest trying to stop it. Tempest taken out. We saw two specialists now popped quite early in a, a round of control, but the ticks is being ticked over at B. Will Sharky invest his, school, his specialist here? Doesn't look like it, but Kovs has the Annihilator out, finds one, or finds two, can't find another, but uh, Bravado hitting back, playing a better control side on B this time around, and it's going to be Ian giving up beef at this stage, going over to A, and play number 10, Waffle, is playing uh, a corner here right at the back, they do pick him up, is Bravado, at this stage Bravado is just playing, oh, well, Waffle is just playing with him, do not go over to that A site to uh, to take over. And truly flawless play by Waffle there. He just stays alive, relays all the intel to his teammates, make sure that DVD cannot push up because now the EN players have turned around. A very solid offense for from EN here, as we're seeing at the start. And now, as we look towards the players trying to find their way over towards that B site, can they do anything? Can they find those skills that they need? It seems like BBD at the moment will be waiting them. Yep, we'll see now that it's still 23-21. Bravado has that two kill advan advantage. Make that three. This might go all the way in this control. As Heroes will now be pushing up. He is contesting or taking it over at this point. A nade comes over. Shots is taken down. Sharky. Now let's see if he war uses his war machine here. We don't know yet. Gravity is used by Lithium. Picks up one. Rahil will fall. Three players down. Two players down. Kovs was there to clean up. Kovs now falls. Here comes the war machine. And this could end things for Bravado. This is over. This map should be over with this war machine. Yeah, and that is it. Energy Esports. 3 owing Bravado. They're doing... A, rev a reverse on a Bravado, what Bravado did to Ian the last week. Indeed. And you never to think 3 0s against a team like Ian or a team like Bravado is out of your mind, but Energy Esports was playing out of their mind. Ian played out of their minds and uh, BBE did not play like themselves. Just felt like they were playing selfish the whole time. While Ian, you saw this in this control and you saw it in the SND as well. Ian always made sure that they had multiple people looking at the same player and trying to tag them out and baiting and switching correctly. While BBD were trying to win gunfights. Yeah. And when you do that, you can win your gunfights, sure. But playing with, a, with good coordination. Yeah, well, just having a look at this last control, an abysmal two rounds for Bravado at the start then slowly but surely picking things up it looked like that last round they were crawling their way back in and maybe could have taken it but unfortunately couldn't as Ian just comes out victorious here in a 3-1 fashion and that is a 3-0 against Bravado something we all didn't expect last week we didn't expect a 3-0 against Ian and same this week it's just crazy scenes um, and it can it's actually to all the viewers that have just joined, uh, you've obviously missed a flippin' insane series. Good game. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. let's just talk from the start and take it from the start. And just talk about what happened every single, or every map that uh, that Bravado just didn't pitch. That first hard point was played on Gridlock. And anyway, if we look back at it, Bravado was in contest of that hard, of that hard point. But... Yeah. But... Every time it was Energy Esports that that outgunned them. We saw the scoreline from from Ian. They outgunned them in almost every gunfight. You mentioned the top three players from every side. Um, that all Ian's players um, was in the thirties, and all Bravado's was on the in the twenties. And yep. Bravado always had that rotation down, but Ian just broke it with ease. Yeah, they just. 
they broke BVD setups on the second hill and on the third hill, and then they managed a solid set of rotations. On the last, uh, on the last two rotations of uh, of of hard points, you had Ian beating BVD on the uh, on the rotation from second to third, just getting all the kills that they needed, even though BVD had an, uh, getting at least thirty seconds of that third hill, rotating towards that fourth hill with help from their teammates that were spawning out, getting taking control of that fourth hill for most of its time, and then just splitting the 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 first hill. Yeah. To then get control again of spawns on that second hill for that very last hill of the game, as well as picking up streaks during that third hill that I mentioned before. Yeah, it's... just the streaks set them, the streaks set them apart. Yeah, indeed, so and then to follow was that search and destroy, and if we look back at it, it was back and forth. Ian made some mistakes, getting one v three twice. Um, Bravado made mistakes, but. Ultimately, it was Energy Esports that was a bit more patient and uh, played it a bit more together, I could say. Just Indeed. trading from each other. And it was led. We saw Frosty dropping that TDM scores. It was 16 and 4 at the end of it. And uh, it was helped by Sharky. That also was 12 and 4, something like that. So, for Bravado, not a good SND. Not a good S and D from them. They always let uh, Sharky put the bomb down on A, and even when they saw him cross towards the bomb, they couldn't do anything to stop it. They just tried to win. They just tried to win their gunfights, and they ended up not doing it. As well as those one v threes that happened, it's just down to individual talent, down to individual talent from the BVD players, and not exactly team play. So what ended up happening is, technically, in terms of round count, we played. It was the the SD was six three, correct? Yes. It should have been it should have been a seven two in terms of round. No, not a seven two, an eight and one. Because the, because of those two one v threes. One v three. So it just shows that uh Ian outplayed B V D in that S and D. They just their offenses were practically perfect. Yeah. Their defense was decent and Frosty was just picking up two pieces with the help of his teammates hundred yep. percent all the time. Yeah, and if you have someone to follow up after you dropping a 16 and 4 with a 12 and 4, it's always going to be difficult for the other team. And then yeah. the control that we've just seen, a 3 1 scoreline, an abysmal two rounds that first in the first two rounds of control. And then Bravado slowly but surely got back into it. Um, they got the rotations down to B, where Ian obviously went to A and. They swapped around when needed. They were three men up in that last round um, before Ian won it. They were three kills up and um, the Gravity Slam came in. The Wash Machine came out. And Ian just playing an all-round control better than Bravado. And you barely exactly. see that being the case from Bravado as they're a very good control team. True. BBD just didn't play their game while Ian played spectacularly really well. They weren't making that many mistakes in the control, especially over on the A side. They just, they basically won all the trades that they needed to win, yeah. to break the to break the A side, whether they were on offense or defense. And then they managed to push BBD back into their spawn. And when you start doing that, and you have total control of the site, whether you're capturing or defending it, it's just very hard to break because you have small doorways number one, then small areas after those doorways, and then. BBD was not sending a player on to pinch re regularly, and when you do that, it's just very easy to watch two doorways on both sides of the map, whether you're defending or attacking, and just eliminating the players that come through those doorways. You yeah. saw that BBD stacked up on the um, on the gold area. You had three players stacked up. They ended up dying simply because they stacked up and they couldn't do anything there. Yeah, it was. And it was... Just oh. Ian having a better setup over on the A side. Yeah, no, it was. Um, we can see definitely that Energy Esports it it did um, it did phase them that uh, they got 3-0'd last week, and uh, they came back with the fire 3 0 ing Bravado this week. But uh, Bravado has time now to fix things. As Thursday, these two teams will be taking uh, the stage yet again. Bravado and Energy Esports Thursday at 7 p.m. for the Metal State Pro Series Group One. 
So uh, for Bovado, they're going to be looking to hit back and hit back well against that Energy Esports team coming Thursday. But for now, gents, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for everyone in the stream, thanks yet again for joining me. For Edgar, you as well, thanks for taking that time. Uh, for CodZA, not for me, um, for joining us, being there, always being uh, there to help. And uh, I thank you. It's always nice to be here, try to help the community grow a little bit. Yeah, indeed. So I appreciate that. Um, to everyone in the stream, thank you very much. Um, I'll check you guys in this week to come. It's going to be a crazy week. A lot of Metal State games going down. And don't forget, teams still have to register for the VS Gaming Cups for ACGL. This Friday, there's a uh, Cape Town. If you're in Cape Town and you're a gamer, please get to MWeb. MWeb Game Zone in Cape Town. Uh, to go to the ACGL site, that is www.acglafricagamingleague.co.za. Get on there, get yourself a ticket and come to MWeb Friday at 7, or I think at 6 p.m. it starts. And people like Grant Hines is going to be there, like Gareth Woods. It's going to be in a nice, nice uh, day. And uh, some of the, or m I think most of the, the uh, money goes to a charity so if you can pitch up and help that would be uh, much appreciated uh, but uh, for now from myself and Edgar cheerio